All right, Most High in Christ bless everyone. Brothers, sisters, Most High in Christ bless. Happy Sabbath. All right. Um, Officer Jonathan, we good? You got everything I sent you? Yes, sir. We're ready to go. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, everybody knows the uh, election is coming up for our brothers and sisters in the world who still partake in voting, partaking in um, upholding this uh, white supremacist society that we live in, all right, and giving hope to a system that has failed us over time and time and time again, all right? Um, today's class, we're going to speak about that, okay, and we're going to speak about how that's contrary to the Bible. Today's class is entitled Politrix, Liars, and Vile Liberals, Politrix, liars, and vile liberals. I want to open up with the book of Proverbs, please. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. Proverbs 14 and verse 12. Go ahead. The book of Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Read it again. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, mm -hmm. But the end thereof are the ways of death. So the Bible tells us there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. Somebody explain that and keep it in context to what the title of the class is. Okay. Uh, Kasha. Just walked in. All right. Give me somebody else. Give me one of the soldiers. Anybody. Stand up, say your name. Hey, Shalom, Soldier Moriel. Most high in Christ bless. Most high in Christ bless. So basically what that scripture is going into is our people in the world, they look at, like you were saying, politics, uh, these things that are set up in the world by the white man, and they try to find a way out of the situation we're going through, through those routes rather than going through God. So when you go through politics, whether... Uh, whatever, marching, all these things that we, our people do, mm -hmm. the scripture is saying that the end of that is going to be death. Because why, is it, why is it the end death? Why does it say the end thereof is death? Because they're going through all those things to avoid keeping the commandments. So when you read, was it uh, Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, we're still trying to remain in our sin and be, be get these uh, equal rights, and we're trying to stop getting shot down in the streets, but all these things are happening because we don't keep God's commandments. Exactly. So remember, politics, these different um, sects of uh, politics that you have, whether it be you know, conservative, far-right, uh, Democrats, liberal, or whatever else is out there, uh, um, all of these things were set up to separate us, to keep us separated as a people. Instead of looking at the problem, the issues that we have in our community as so-called Negroes is that we are the Israelites. We broke God's commandments. So these are the things that's happening to us. You'll have people say, well, we can vote for the lesser of two evils. How many times y'all heard that before? All the time. Huh? All A lot time. of times, right? Yeah. The lesser of the two evils. You know what, you know what you're saying when, when you say that? The lesser of the two evils? I mean, you're still going to get evil. Right. You're still going to get some, there's something negative that's going to come out of that, regardless. Whether it's a great evil or a less evil, you're still going to get screwed in the end. That's why the Bible forbids us to vote. And we're going to get into that. Read Proverbs 14 and 12 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14 and verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And the end thereof, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, those policies never, those agendas that those politi politicians push was never beneficial to the so-called black man in America. None of it. I don't care how they try to dress it up, make it look nice. It never benefited our people. That's why the Bible says the end thereof is the way of death. Okay, get me Revelation, please. Revelation chapter 13. And I want verse, uh, let's see where we're going to start at. Because you got election elections coming up this year. Okay, and a lot of our parents in the world are going to get caught up in that. A lot of our friends in the world are going to get caught up in that. Now you could explain to them why we do not partake in politics, actually called politrix, because it's a trap for our people. Um, read verse 11, please. Revelation. 
13, 11. 13 and 11. Go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, mm -hmm. and he had two horns like a lamb. And he had two horns like a lamb. This is talking about Esau's system. All right. It had two horns like a lamb, like a lamb. Go ahead. And he spake as a dragon. And, but he spoke like a dragon. When it says, and he spake as a dragon, it's the same thing like saying, but he spake as a dragon. Somebody explain that. Keep it in context. Somebody explain that. Just hand it to somebody. Since everybody hands is down, just give it to somebody. Go ahead. Shalom, Cap. Mm -hmm. uh, his brother named Sean. Um, he's, Scripture's basically saying that his, he portrays himself to be meek um, as if he's following some form of law that's righteous. Okay, that would be the lamb part, right? Yes, a sir. lamb would be what considered uh, meek, docile, and so forth, right? Okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, the dragon part is even though he's speaking that way, there's an agenda behind it. There's an agenda behind it. Very good. I like that answer. Okay, the two horns. Read that again. Verse 11. Come on. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Go ahead. And he had two horns. That's Democratic Republic. Democrats and Republic. Go ahead. Like a lamb. Like a lamb. So he comes off as nice. He comes off as a sheep. He comes off as approachable. He comes off as if his cause is for the people, so-called black people. Go ahead. And he spake as a dragon. But there's a hidden agenda there. There's a hidden agenda. Why? To do what? To destroy the people of God. To keep us separated. All right? To keep us separated as a people. To where we would never know who we are in these last days. To keep us destroyed. Keep us from coming back as the nation of Israel. Let me get the precept for that. In the book of Psalms, chapter 55 and verse 21. Psalms. Chapter 55, verse 21. Write these precepts down, brothers. The book of Psalms, chapter 55 and verse 21. Go ahead. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. So the words in Esau's mouth, the words in these Democrats' mouth, these Republicans, these politicians, is smooth, it's always smoother than butter. How do we know that? Because whenever you go to whatever voting booth, Whatever places they have where you can go to vote, you see a line of Negroes. Every four years, keep hope alive. They reel you in with the same crap, and our people just fall for it. Like bait for a fish. Our people are the fish, just biting the bait every four years, taking the same bait. We're going to do this for you. We're going to do that for you. Could never answer questions straight. What about reparations? What about reparations? They'll give you this whole speech, and then you're lost. Now that's not even the topic now. Notice so-called blacks don't even talk about that now. Why? Because you got rocked to sleep. That's what they do. Read that again. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Smoother than butter, just like a lamb. Go ahead. But war was in his heart. War was in his heart, like a dragon. War was in his heart. That's that hidden agenda. Okay, go ahead. His words were softer than oil. His words were softer than oil. Come on. Yet... They were drawn swords. Yet were they drawn swords. Remember, that's why the Bible tells us what? Never trust thine enemies. So if you're voting for the lesser of two evils, that means you're trusting in your enemies. The Bible says never to trust your enemies. So there should not be one black person, one Hispanic person, one native Indian person voting to keep your oppressors in power. That makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. Okay? All of that is contradictory. Contra it's a total contradiction to the Bible. God says, never trust thine enemy. Read that again from the beginning. The book of Psalms, chapter 55 and verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Come on. But war was in his heart. Mm -hmm. His words were softer than oil. Yet were they drawn swords. Yet were they drawn swords. Is that it? Yes, sir. Get me Deuteronomy now. Now let's go to the law. Is there a law in the Bible that forbids us to vote? Absolutely. Yes, there is. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17 and verse 15. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Now who did God choose to be king over us, brothers? 
Thank you. Christ, the black Messiah. That's the only person we voting for. Okay, and our people in the world, that's something that they need to fall in line with. Okay, that Christ is the only man, the only person that's going to get our vote. Read that again. Deuteronomy 17, verse 15. Go ahead. Thou shalt in any wise set him, set him king over thee. Go ahead. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose. And the Most High chose Christ out of the seed line of David to be our Lord and Savior and King. Okay, go ahead. One from among thy brethren. One from among thy brethren, because we know Donald Trump ain't amongst our brethren. All right, and then you have who else? Who else is running against him? Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, all these different people. They ain't, they ain't our kinsmen. Even Obama, even Obama, that many, of, many people up in here, the first time when Obama ran for president, how many of y'all voted for him? Tell the truth. Tell the truth, truth, truth. Okay, I put my hands up too. The first time. Well, I wasn't in the truth. Right. I was happy. I was happy. Damn, a black man? Are you serious? Man, man, man. Then what happened after that? Gay, Gay marriage. marriage. Gay marriage. Like, what? Totally contrary to the Bible. But I thought it's in God we trust. What happened to that? What happened to putting your hand on the Bible when you walk in court? What happened to that? That was all a front. Just like recently when um, Donald Trump uh, got rid of all the protesters just to take that damn picture in front of the church holding up a Bible. Right. Probably don't even know that the first book in the Bible is the book of Genesis. Holding up the constitution of the people protesting. The blacks. Holding it up. Meanwhile, they don't do anything that the Bible says. Okay, read that again. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Go ahead. One from among thy brethren uh -huh. shalt thou set king over thee. Go ahead. Thou mayest not. Thou mayest not. Thou mayest not. Go ahead. Set a stranger over thee, mm -hmm. which is not thy brother. You hear that? You hear what the Bible says? That's the scripture you want to share with your family members if this discussion ever comes up. It says, you shall not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. Okay, Esau is not our brother anymore. Okay, you can't set him up over you. He doesn't have your best interests at heart. Even our people, let's say it was a black man. Let's say it was Herman Cain. Oh, God. Herman Coon Cain. All right, Lord's will he repent. Look at, the, look at the ideologies that these guys push, man. The things that they, um, their policies. It never benefits our people and everything is totally contrary to God's laws. This is why we over, we're over here in Babylon walking around the same mountain for 40 years. Something is truly wrong with us, with our people. We just can't get right. Walking around the same mountain, making the same mistakes. God says no voting, Negroes want to vote every four years. God says, don't do this. We want to do that. We need to open up the Bible and realize not only we are the people of the book, but we got to start to do things in the book that's going to bring forth salvation. Y'all brothers understand? Sir. Okay. Get me, uh, get me the 15th Amendment. How many of you are familiar with the 15th Amendment? Somebody raise your hand without looking at the screen. I already put it up. Uh, Officer Elior. What is the 15th Amendment? I'm not sure. Okay. Yakub, do you know? Uh, the voting right. Uh, not being able to be denied for voting because of race, religion. Okay. All right. Let's get that. Very good. Let's get that article. Okay. Uh, who could read for me? Soraya, can you see that? All right. Go ahead. Start on the introduction. Yes, sir. <clears throat> The 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution granted African-American men the right to vote by declaring that the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Or previous condition of servitude. Why? Because we came right up out of captivity. Okay, we're still in captivity, but the yokes of iron was released. Hold that. Get me Deuteronomy. I want Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. The 
the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness mm -hmm. and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. For the abundance of all things, we're supposed to serve God, meaning keep his commandments. Go ahead. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. So God said you're going to serve your enemies. We're in the land of our enemies. Our enemies is Esau, the white man. Okay, the same people that our people are going to go online for and vote for. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee mm -hmm. in hunger. Go ahead. And in thirst. Go ahead. And in nakedness. Uh -huh. And in want of all things. This is the part that I want right here. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So we had yokes of iron on our necks when we were in servitude. Go ahead. Until he have destroyed until, thee. Until, until, when we was emancipated those yokes of iron was removed from our necks, but it says until we have destroyed thee. We lost our culture. We lost our nationality, our language, our God. And we were divided in what? We were divided uh, with nationalities. We were divided in religion. We were divided also in politics. Okay? Read. Although ratified on February 3rd, 1870, the promise of the 15th Amendment would not be fully realized for almost a century. Through the use of poll taxes, literacy tests, and other means, Southern states were able to effectively disenfranchise African Americans. It would take the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 before the majority of Af African Americans in the South were registered to vote. And guess what? The same thing was going in the North. They try to separate the North from the South, East from the West. No. All right, Esau is Esau. They was doing the same thing all over. It's just some were subtle and some were just out front, boom, right in your face. Okay? They were all the same everywhere. So what happened? When they passed the 15th Amendment, they were blocking Negroes from, they were making it hard for them to vote. All right? They had uh, hard tests, the literacy tests. They had KKKs stopping them. They were intimidating them so they wouldn't go to the polls and vote. Okay, and that was later done away with in the Voting Rights Acts of 1965. Get me the next article on that. The Voting Rights Acts of 1965. Okay, go ahead. Voting Rights Act of 1965. The Voting Rights Act of 1965, signed into law by President Lyndon B. Johnson, aimed to overcome legal barriers at the state and local levels that prevented African Americans from exercising their right to vote as guaranteed under the 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. The Voting Rights Act is considered one of the most far-reaching pieces of civil rights legislation in U.S. history. Go down. Uh, go down a little bit more. Go down. Uh, uh, read that right there, after the Civil War. After the Civil War, the 15th Amendment, ratified in 1870, prohibited states from denying a male citizen the right to vote based on race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Nevertheless, in the ensuing decades, various discriminatory practices were used to prevent African Americans, particularly those in the South, from exercising their right to vote. So Negroes wanted to be on the same level as good old white folks, Edomites, okay? Go ahead. During the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 1960s, voting rights activists in the South were subjected to various forms of mistreatment and violence. One event that outraged many Americans occurred on March 7, 1965, when peaceful participants in a Selma to Montgomery march for voting rights were met by Alabama state troopers who- well, even in 1965, Esau was still trying to stop them, like, oh, hell no. Nah. So they met them with what? Nightsticks? Go ahead. State troopers who attacked them with nightsticks, tear gas, and whips after they refused to turn back. Damn, they even had whips at that time. Go ahead. Some protesters were severely beaten and bloodied, and others ran for their lives. Mm -hmm. The incident was captured on national television. Go down. In the wake of the shocking incident, Johnson called for comprehensive voting rights legislation. In a speech to a joint session of Congress on March 15, 1965, the president outlined the devious ways in which election officials denied African-American citizens the vote. Go down. Literacy tests. 
blacks attempting to vote often were told by election officials that they had gotten the date, time, or polling place wrong, that they possessed insufficient literacy skills, or that they had filled out an application incorrectly. Blacks whose population suffered a high rate of illiteracy due to centuries of oppression and poverty often would be forced to take literacy tests when they sometimes fail. So we could not read. Why? Because we had to do what? Who was teaching us how to read? Esau. So what you think happened after um, the yokes of iron came off our necks? We had nobody to teach us. So, you know, some of the slaves were self-taught. That's things that they don't teach us. But a, a, an abundance of us, a majority of us, without Esau, we just fell to the bottom. That's why they was able to imp implement all of these things. All right, let's read that again. Deuteronomy 28. Read verse 48. Read it again. Yes, sir. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Come on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, mm -hmm. which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. In want of all things. You want to learn how to read? You want religion? You must go to Esau. That's what the Bible is telling us. So we see, we see the application of this right here in this article. Shows you that the Bible is a real book. Okay, read that, Sariah. Johnson also told Congress that, by, that voting officials, primarily in southern states, had been known to force black voters to recite the entire Constitution. That's wicked as hell. Look what they did. They put things in place to make sure we couldn't vote. Go ahead. Or explain the most complex provisions of state laws, a task most white voters would have been hard-pressed to accomplish. Mm -hmm. In some cases, even blacks with college degrees were turned away from the polls. Good Lord. Even blacks with college degrees was turned away from the polls. Okay, close that article out. Close that article out. Get me, um, let me see what I sent you. One second. Say something, Mike Judah, Soraya, somebody talk. Well, as we just went through in Deuteronomy chapter 28, you know, there's a clear definition of it right there. There's a clear example of it right there, what happened, uh, what was happening to our people in the past, and it's still happening today. They're still doing it. They, they're making our children, you know, recite it in classrooms, the Constitution. You got to stand up before the, they're making them, they making it mandatory that they stand up and recite the flag. It's still happening today. The same thing that was happening to our people back then. Excellent point. All right. Um, get me the article from the New York Times with Reagan. Reagan. All right. Reagan was a Republican, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Because I hear there's a thing out there with people saying, well, you know, the first blacks were, um, were Republicans. It was the Republicans that helped abolish slavery and brothers and sisters slavery was not abolished it was just transferred it was transferred from from a uh, person to state am i saying that right yes sir person to state okay it's in the 13th amendment okay they say slavery still is still good to go if it's punishable if it's a punishable for a crime they could use it for crime that's where you get the prison system from all right but negroes don't read so now there's this thing where people will be like well Republicans are better or Democrats are better. They're all the same. And that's what we're going to go into today. Okay, let's play this tape by your friend Ronald Reagan. Read the title. Read the title. We need all of that good stuff in there. Come on. Reagan called Africans monkeys in the call with Nixon. Tape reveals. Go down. Go down. I think uh, the we can read it here. I mean, um, the actual tape. Go down. Click show full article. Go down. Okay, you're gonna bring it to press play and then bring it to 635. Because you had many blacks that went and voted for Reagan. You had blacks that voted for Reagan. Let's hear his opinions on so called Negroes. Go ahead. Hey, did y'all hear that? Can y'all hear that? Bring it back again. Bring it back again. Bring it back. Yeah. 
uncomfortable wearing shoes. He says those <laughs> monkeys, he was making reference to something that happened at the United Nations. I guess there were some African speakers there. He says and that he wasn't too uh, happy about. They gave a speech that he wasn't too happy about. So he said those uh, leaders there, those people there, those monkeys there, they're still uncomfortable wearing shoes. So then, then you hear Richard Nixon laughing, right? Because that's how they do behind closed doors. They smile in your face, but in the background is some evil going on. That's how they really feel about our people. And many of our brothers and sisters, our foreparents, they voted for these people. You gonna say something, Mike Judah? Yeah, um, these are, like today, we have some black people, just like those those two ladies who, they were Republicans and they were all for Donald Trump. They, um, we still got black people today who bank so hard on the fact that the Republican, we were Republicans before we were Democrat. And this is at the time Reagan, Reagan then was calling us monkeys. Mm -hmm. But they, they bank on that and they use that today to say, oh, the Democrats ain't never did nothing for us. The Republicans are the ones that, who freed us. The, the Republicans did that, but these people that's calling us monkeys. Exactly. Huh? And these are the people that our people will put their hope for and, have, and vote for them. Uh, press play. Y'all can listen to the rest on your own. That's the point that I wanted on Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon. And he was the sitting president. And he didn't say nothing. He enabled him. Like I was saying, that was the talk. That's how they all speak behind closed doors about so-called black people. Officer Yakub. Hey, Kat, mm -hmm. what's funny is when they say that Republicans were the ones that uh, freed us, when you look up uh, some of the things that Abraham Lincoln had to say about slaves, Abraham Lincoln actually said that he would not have Exactly. If, if he could have preserved there. the union, he would have tried to find another right. way. Absolutely. And all of that was just an expansion of slavery. It was trying to expand slavery, right? One day we'll get into more of that. Get me the next one. Get me the very next one that I sent you. All right. By New York Times again. This one by New York Times again. All right. Uh, read that, Soraya. In tapes, Nixon rails about Jews and blacks. Go ahead. And the Jews are black, by the way. That's true. Go ahead. Your Belinda, California. Richard M. Nixon made dis disparaging remarks about Jews, blacks, Italian Americans, and Irish Americans in a series of extended conversations with top aides and his personal secretary, recorded in the Oval Office 16 months before he resigned as president. The remarks were contained in 265 hours of recordings captured by the secret taping system Nixon had installed in the White House and released this week by Nixon Presidential Library and Museum. While previous recordings have detailed Nixon's animosity towards Jews, including those who served in his administration like Henry A. Kissinger. Go down, go down. I don't, I don't care too much about Amalek. Go down. I want to hear what he said about black people. Go down. Go down, go down, go ahead, go down, go down. Wait, wait, is that it right there? No, go down. Wait, 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 wait. go back up, I'm sorry. Go back up, go back up. All right, start right there where it says Bill Rogers. Bill Rogers has got, to his credit, it's a de decent feeling, but somewhat sort of a blind spot on the black thing because he's been in New York, Nixon said. Go ahead. He says, well, they are coming along. They, the they that's coming along is so-called Negroes. Go ahead. And that after they are going to strengthen our country. And after, the, read it right. And that, and that after all, mm -hmm. they are going to strengthen our country in the, the end. The they that's going to strengthen the country, the they that's going to strengthen the country is talking about blacks. Okay, we are the burden bearers of society. Okay, go ahead. In the end, because they are strong physically and some of them are smart. They're strong physically and some of them, some of them are smart. Go ahead. So forth and so on. Go ahead. My own view is I think he's right if you're talking in terms of 500 years. So from the time that he was sitting in office, 
which was the early 70s, um, March 1973, uh, 1973. He's saying 500 years from 1973. That's when the Negro, that's when the Negro would what? Come to full fruition of his mental capacity. You hear the insult? So we're not even there yet. We're not even halfway there yet. That's what they're saying. Now in 2020, we're not, they're saying we're not even halfway there yet. Read that again from the start where it said my own. My own view is I think he's right if you're talking in terms of 500 years, he said. I think it's wrong if you're talking in terms of 50 years. So 50 years from 1973, the Negro was still nothing. In their mind, they said, nah, they're still monkeys. They're still apes. He said, give them maybe 500 years to evolve. That's an insult. And these are the same people that our people would vote for. Fight over it. Democrats, Republicans. Read. What has to happen is they have to be, frankly, inbred. Damn. Said what has to happen is they have to be, frankly, inbred. Who knows what inbred mean? Inbred is like uh, incest, right? Yes, incest. Frankly, they have to be inbred. Go ahead. And you just, that's the only thing that's going to do it, Rose. Wow. Okay, drop that article. Mm -mm -mm. So you got Reagan and Nixon talking-ish. Two, uh, what do they call them? Um, Chief of State, right? That's another nickname for presidents. Am I right? Yes, sir. Chief of State. President. This is your president. So-called black people are lining up to vote for. Get me the next article. Now let's bring it up to this day. Hey, next article. Hey, Cap. Yes, sir. All, all he was doing was uh, reciting what it said in that Willie Lynch letter when it said that we would be destroyed, we would be in this cycle unless a phenomenon happened. We would be in that cycle for thousands of years. That's all he's reciting. Mm -hmm. So he's really just reciting his forefather saying that we'll be destroy, a destroyed mind until a phenomenon happened. Mm -hmm. But with him, he's saying that the 500 years, basically in 500 years, we're going to um, add to their society. We'll be able to contribute to their society. Okay, now with the, the Willie Lynch letter, with the phenomenon that occurred, he's talking about, because before that he said history is going to correct itself. History has a way of correcting itself. And then the phenomenon is what you see here. Just like you've seen the camp videos today in Atlanta. That's the phenomenon. Brothers waking up. All right? Go ahead. Let's play the next devil. Play this, please. Because this, I, I believe this is the man that, that uh, won the Democratic uh, uh, nominee or whatever the hell they call it. So he's going to be the one that's going to go up against Donald Trump, correct? Anybody know? Biden. Okay. Go ahead. Press play. A leading editor uh, of, a, of a paper in the Delaware Valley um, wrote asked their reporters to come down and talk to me and said, why is Biden so concerned about Bosnia and not about Haiti? Is it because blacks are involved in Haiti? Blacks are what at stake in Haiti and in Bosnia. They are European whites. Um, there is major uh, arsenals of nuclear weapons where they have long histories of national... So pause war. it real quick. He said there's major uh, nuclear arsenals in Bosnia. That's what he's making reference to. But listen to his comment about Haiti. And keep in mind, keep in mind, this is a Democrat, all right? We just heard the opinions of Republicans with Reagan and Nixon. I believe Nixon was a Republican as well. Okay, we just heard their opinions of our people, black people. Now we're gonna hear from a Democrat's point of view. Go ahead. Major uh, arsenals of nuclear weapons where they have long histories of national wars where ethnicity dominates. Uh, uh, that is a phenomenal potential consequence to the United States. If Haiti, a god-awful thing to say, if Haiti just quietly sunk into the Caribbean or rose up 300 feet, it wouldn't matter a whole but lot in terms of our interests. But the world and, and... Damn. Levi can't get a break. He said if Haiti sunk, it really wouldn't matter. Who gives a damn? Well, God gives a damn. Okay, so now you see the point of view. Oh, that's what. I, that's why in Revelation 13, y'all forgot the point. Read it again. Read it again. And some people might say, well, this was this interview looked like it was in the 80s or early 90s. It's still the same Edomite, 
still the same. It's still the same, man. Their policies speak for themselves. Okay, read Revelation 13 again. Come on. Verse 11 again. Yep. The book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 11. Go ahead. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he had two horns. Two horns, Democrat Republic. Go ahead. Like a lamb. Like a lamb. Because people, there's people that like this guy. There's black people going on national TV, media, and saying, vote for Joe Biden. Hmm. Well, you got to ask the Haitians how they feel about that now. Read. And. He spake as a dragon. And he spake as a dragon. This is one example. Speaking like a dragon, but you got to do the research on it. Okay? Drop that. Get me uh, Luke. Get me Luke. Luke. I want Luke 6, verse 45. The book of Luke, chapter 6 and verse 45. Go ahead. A good man out of the treasure of his heart. A good man out of the treasure of his heart. What is your heart, brothers? Your mind. your mind. Your mind. Go ahead. Bringeth forth fruit, which is good. Bring forth fruit, which is good. Meaning your actions, and not only your actions, but, but your words. But your words. Go ahead. And an evil man. And an evil man, Esau. Go ahead. Out of the evil treasure of his heart. Out of the evil treasure of his mind. Out of his mind, go ahead. Bringeth forth that which is evil. Bringeth forth that which is evil. For saying that you don't care if a whole continent, uh, not a continent, a whole island sinks. Unbelievable. But what do we expect? Do we expect sympathy or any kind of remorse from Esau? No, absolutely not. Go ahead. For the abundance of his heart. For the abundance, the abundance of his heart, which is his mind. Go ahead. His mouth speaketh. His mouth speaketh. Just let them talk. Just make sure you hit record when they're talking. Because then they will try to erase it. Get rid of the footage. That's right. Just let him talk. Let him talk. All right? The Bible says, for, out, for of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Okay? And we're going to see a whole, bunch, a whole bunch more of that. Okay? Go ahead. Um, get me the next article. So here you have the, uh, the hypocritical conversion. Look at this now. This is from his Twitter. Look what he said. Read that, Soraya. The Trump administration is abandoning the Haitian people while the country's political crisis is paralyzing that nation. Why do you care all of a sudden? Is it because now you're running for president? Now all of a sudden you care? But back then, when he did that interview, you didn't care. You said if Haiti sinks, into the ground, who gives a damn? Now you're running up against Trump, and you don't, you know, Trump done put his foot in his mouth with the Haitian people. Now you want to say the Trump administration is abandoning the Haitian people while the country's political crisis is paralyzing that nation. Then at the bottom, look what it says. It says, uh, there is no hope. Crisis pushes Haiti to brink of collapse. Go down. Let me see if there's more on that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's it. That's it. Close that down. So now you see the, the sudden shift. But we know where his heart is. We know where his mind is. He don't give a damn about the tribe of Levi. He don't give a damn about the so-called Haitians. Okay? Let's get his constituent now. Let's get this guy. Look at this guy's face. Go ahead. Press play. Using vulgar language, President Trump. Keep in mind, Joe Biden is a Democrat. Now let's get a Republican point of view. Go ahead. Using vulgar language, President Trump today questioned why the United States would allow people from Haiti and Africa into the country, describing mm. those places using an expletive while suggesting people from Norway might be more acceptable. He reportedly made the comments during a White House meeting with a bipartisan group of senators. The White House tonight is not denying the president made the remarks. Now, we want you to know our report includes that expletive once so that you can hear the complete quote for yourself. And, of course, it may not be appropriate for some of our younger viewers. NBC's Peter Alexander has details. The president tonight apparently uncorking another astonishing statement, complaining to lawmakers in the Oval Office about protections for immigrants. Why do we want the people from, quote, all these shithole countries here? 
according to a Democratic aide. You heard what he said? Why do we want... Bring it back a bit. Somebody paused it. I don't know why. Bring it back a few seconds. Go ahead. Press play. Complaining to lawmakers in the Oval Office about protections for immigrants. Why do we want these people from, quote, all these shithole countries here? According to a Democratic aide familiar Damn. with the conversation, Mr. Trump was referring to African nations and Haiti. It's the before- same sentiment. Same thing that Reagan did, Nixon did, Joe Biden did. Now Trump is doing it. There's no difference. Everybody's attacking Trump. You got black people attacking Trump as if the Democrats are better. Simple as hell. Falling for the okie doke. We always fall for the okie doke. Walking around that same mountain for 40 years. Don't realize that's the same mountain. A year past, you think a Negro would be like, damn, didn't we come across this last year? Nope. Go around it again. You go around it again. Hold on, didn't what this look familiar, man? What the hell is this? Where we going? Nope. Walk around it again. That's black people for you. Unbelievable. Go ahead. Press play. Testing the U.S. should have more people from places like Norway, I mean, whose prime minister. So met, more yes. white people is beneficial. We don't want you Negroes. We don't want no. We don't need you Nigerians. You. Ghanaians, you Sierra Leoneans, and definitely we don't want you Haitians. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. A White House spokesman tonight not denying the president's words, but saying certain Washington politicians choose to fight for foreign countries, but President Trump will always fight for the American people. It comes as lawmakers try to hammer out an immigration deal, with time running out for hundreds of thousands of young undocumented immigrants called DREAMers the crass remark punctuating a wild day in Washington. All right, with- bring that down. Get me the next article. Because this was recently. This wasn't too long ago. All right, that was in uh, two years ago, 2018. Now let's go back a little further. Let's go to 2016. Blow this up. Go ahead. Is there any volume to this or no? Is just words? Party and to sit down and negotiate and to compromise and let's see if we can get something done. I feel having the Democrats in with us is absolutely vital because this should be a bipartisan bill. This should be a bill of love, truly a bill of love. Press pause, press pause, press pause. Look at this. When Trump heard the Haitians were among those who would benefit, that was talking about the bipartisan bill that he mentioned, the immigration bill. He asked if they could be left out of the plan. (laughs) Oh, man. According to the people familiar with the conversation asking, why do we want people from Haiti here? Go ahead. All these people, press pause, it says, all these people from shithole countries. Go ahead. Now, you see, you heard you heard one organization come out and say and said this is a low point for our nation. America has always been spewing this kind of rhetoric from the beginning. That's why we started off. I purposely started off with Ronald Reagan and Nixon. And we're actually going to go to presidents before that soon after this. Go ahead. I'll say that uh, that was very clumsy, um, and it's it's not good in actually depicting the role that he's playing in the world as a leader. Well, that is the perfect definition. Okay. All right. So these are testimonials from uh, uh, so-called Africans. All right. Drop that. Drop that. Let's get some other. Uh, go down. Wait, wait, wait. Nope, not this one. Back up. Back to the, the last article that you were just at, the one that you just left. Nope, the one for Trump, the one that you just left. Go down, I wanna read something. Go down, go 
Read that, Soraya. When Donald Trump visited Little Haiti during the 2016 presidential campaign, he told the Haitian American community, I really want to be your biggest champion. I really want to be your biggest champion. Same thing Joe Biden is doing now when he says, uh, when he's talking about the turmoil in Haiti and he's blaming Trump. But meanwhile, there's a video out saying that you don't give a damn if Haiti sunk into the sea. Okay, so now you had this demon in 2016 when he was campaigning to be a president. He visited little Haiti in Florida. And he says, I really want to be your biggest champion. Go ahead. Minutes later. Minutes, not hours. He couldn't contain it. He was about to spontaneously combust. There's no way he, the demon in him could not, the Edomite demon in him was like, hell no, I can't. What do you mean you want to be, you want to be their champion? Hell no, let me loose, damn it. Minutes later, go ahead. Minutes later, he was calling Haiti a shithole. Damn, go ahead, <laughs> go down. Go down to uh, where it says the idea. The idea of shithole countries was not a new one for Trump, mm -hmm. Woodward wrote. During the 2016 campaign, Trump had visited Little Haiti in Miami. Mm -hmm. Former Haitian leaders had come to the microphones and accused the Clintons of corruption and stealing from Haiti. Go ahead. After the event in private, Trump seemed down. Mm -hmm. I really felt for these people. They come from such a shithole. They come from such a <laughs> shithole. Oh, man. So America quickly forgot about the embargoes that was placed. We're going to touch on that. They forgot about the money that they had to pay back to France for getting their own freedom. They forgot about all of that. They forgot about all the evils that was done. So he, he called uh, Haiti a shithole. Just minutes after, he said, I want to be your champion. And this is a Republican. But at the same time, the, the Haitians were accusing Clintons were Democrats of stealing. And we know the history on that, the evils that the Clintons did. So I'm just showing y'all the parallels, the similarities between the treatments from the Democrats and Republicans. Two horns from the same lamb. Okay, drop that. Get me, uh, not the next one, not yet. Get me, uh, I want... Go to uh, the conversation. Meet Haiti's founding father. I want that one. Read. Meet Haiti's founding father, whose black revolution was too radical for Thomas Jefferson. So now we're going back to the president, Thomas Jefferson. Okay, go ahead. Crowds cheered as local lawmakers on August 18th unveiled a street sign showing that Rogers Avenue in the Flatbush section of Brooklyn would now be called Jean-Jacques Desalines Boulevard. Go ahead. After a Haitian slave turned revolutionary general. Go down. Keep reading. When Desalines declared Haiti's independence from France in 1804, after a 13-year slave uprising and civil war, he became the American's first black head of state. Go down. Supporting the French colonial perspective, Leaders across the Americas and Europe immediately demonized Dessalines. So, so what happened? It says leaders across the Americas and Europe demonized Dessalines. Why? Because he fought for the freedom of his people. Meanwhile, nobody demonized America for the, for the war that they had, the war of independence. You see the, the hypocrisy, brothers? Go ahead. Even in the United States, itself newly independent from Britain, newspapers recounted horrific stories of the final years of the Haitian Revolution. Uh -huh. A war for independence that took the lives of some 50,000 French soldiers. All praises to the Most High for that. Go ahead. And over 100,000 black and mixed race Haitians. Go ahead. For more than two centuries, Dessalines was memorialized as a ruthless brute. Go ahead. Now, say residents of Brooklyn's Little Haiti, the blocks around Rogers Avenue home to some 50,000 Haitian Americans, mm -hmm. it's time to correct the record. They hope the newly renamed Dessalines Boulevard will burnish the reputation of this Haitian hero. Go down. Go ahead. Opposition to Dessalines. Other New Yorkers aren't so sure. The New York City Council's vetting committee labeled Dessalines 
a possibly offensive historical figure. So this New York City Council vetting committee is probably composed of mostly Democratic, because New York is a Democrat state. So they said that this is offensive. So here you have a man fighting for the freedom of his people that is, a, that is offensive. That's why they're offended at what? The black image of Jesus Christ. That's why they're offended at that. Go ahead. Tacitly referencing the massacre of French citizens that followed Haitian's revolution. So all the wicked things that the French was doing to, ha to the Haitians when they had them as slaves, Lord, let's forget about that. So what did you want them to do? Vote them out? Peacefully escort them off of the island? No, you got to meet the same level of threat with an even greater level of threat. And that's what Jean-Jacques Jean Dessalines understood. Okay, go ahead. Just after declaring independence in early 1804, mm -hmm. Dessalines discovered that local French colonists were plotting to overthrow his new government. Go ahead. He ordered all remaining French citizens in Haiti, except for a few French allies, to be killed. So he didn't say, look, get off the island. He killed them. Rightfully so. Go ahead. My research indicates that between 1,000 and 2,000 white landowners and their families, merchants and poor French were executed, always in a very public fashion. Some estimates are as high as 5,000. So he did it openly. Y'all ever seen um, the movie Shaka Zulu? Y'all seen that? Y'all seen when he was hanging people on stakes? That's the same thing Jean-Jacques Dessalines was doing. And he also hanged a lot of them for, from trees. Where did he learn that? That's because they were doing that to the Haitians. So he returned the favor. Go ahead. Dessalines, who protected all British American and other non-French white people living in Haiti, justified the killings as response to acts of war by France. Go ahead. Despite Haiti's declared independence, French imperial forces continued to threaten invasion from their military outposts in Santo Domingo. Because Northern Kingdom was still flying as a silly dove. So that you had the French over there too. Go ahead. Modern day Dominion Republic. Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. Come on. To his critics, however, Dessalines' massacre amounted to white genocide. Go ahead, down. Go down. No, no, keep going, keep going, down. Uh, wait, 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 wait. This is the part that I want. I just want to get to the point. Uh, go to the part where he wrote Jefferson right here in June. In June 1803, when Dessalines began planning for independence, he wrote to President Thomas Jefferson. Like Americans, he reported, Haitians were tired of paying with our blood the price of our blind allegiance to a mother country that cuts her children's throats, he said. They would fight for their freedom. Mm -hmm. Jefferson never responded. Jefferson never responded. Mind you, this is a, this is a president that, that fought for what? The American Revolution. So he, you could say that he kind of understood where Jean-Jacques was coming from. Nope. Absolutely not. Why? Because of the, the hatred and disdain for black people. Go ahead. Dessalines' vision of an autonomous black state, a nation founded by enslaved people who killed their colonial masters, alarmed the patrician Virgin, Virginia plantation owner. Jefferson's letters show the U.S. was also being pressured by southern slave states and French and British diplomats to shun Haiti. Go ahead. Rather than reckoning with the ills of racial oppression and colonialism, most prominent thinkers across the Americas and Europe interpreted Dessalines' war as an example of African barbarity. So you, you see how Esau get down? So they could have their war, kill people with the sword, shoot for their independence, but once we do it, oh, we're barbarians. Go ahead. Haiti was run by a horde of ferocious bandit and led by barbarous chieftains, commented one British observer in 1804. Go down. Pushing the Enlightenment further, the racist view of Dessalines persisted for two centuries. Today, modern scholarship is redeeming. So they, look, don't read past these words. Listen, brothers. They, they said this racist view of Dessalines persisted for two centuries. So the man is racist for fighting for his people. Unbelievable. They wanted the Haitians to stay slaves forever. But we know according to prophecy that wasn't going to happen. Okay, go ahead. Today, modern scholarship is redeeming Haiti's founding father. 
Dessalines challenged the universalist rhetoric of the 1789 French Revolution when idealists toppled their monarchy demanding liberté, égalité, fraternité, <laughs> freedom, equality, and fraternity. You'll, you'll get it. You'll be all right. It's French. <laughs> Yet the French continued to use enslaved labor to produce sugar, coffee, and other crops in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Dessalines said France had shrouded their colonies in a veil of prejudice. Go ahead. He insisted that true e egalite, e egalite. E egalite required black liberty to go down. I want the part about go down. So we heard read about what Jefferson did. He didn't respond to him. Go down, go down. Right there, Dessalines. Dessalines' revolutionary fervor earned him international dip diplomatic isolation. So they isolated Haiti. Another word for that is what? Embargo. Embargo. Go ahead. France refused to accept Haitian independence until 1825, when Haitian President Jean-Pierre Boyer agreed to pay 150 million francs. You see the evil in that? Haiti had to pay... France back for enslaving them for the things that they lost because they got rid of them. 150 million francs. Now, this is part of the reason why they refer to Haiti as a shithole because of the economy is so poor. Why? Because they're broke. Because Esau took everything. But they never bring that up. Why not go to France and take that, take those francs that they originally paid and give them back to Haiti? Why not do that? Since you complain about how poor, the, how poor they are, you're going to take the man's shoe off his feet and ask him why you're walking barefooted. Wicked as hell. Go ahead. Equivalent to U.S. $21 billion today. $21 billion today. You know how much that would do for the people over there, the tribe of Levi, so-called Haitians? It would fix the land. Of course, you got to get rid of the corrupt government. But $21 billion could do a lot for the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Go ahead. For the loss of human and territorial property, mm -hmm. to ensure compliance, French warships with loaded cannons threatened the country from the harbor of Port-au-Prince. Go down. Jump that. Get right there. Jefferson. Jefferson imposed an embargo. Jefferson, an American president, Republican, Republican. What did he do? Imposed an embargo on Haiti. Mm. Go ahead. Cutting off trade with the country from 1806 to 1808. Go ahead. And the U.S. refused to recognize Haitian independence until 1862. Until 1862. Unbelievable. Drop that. Get me um, uh, the Monticello report. Jefferson's attitudes toward slavery. Go down. Go down, go down. Go ahead, read. Thomas Jefferson wrote that all men are created equal. Not true. Go ahead. And yet enslaved more than 600 people over the course of his life. So this was a man saying, well, all men are created equal, but I'm going to have slaves. Why? Because we're big economics. That's why. Go ahead. Although he made some legislative attempts against slavery and at times bemoaned its existence, mm -hmm. he also profited directly from the institution of slavery and wrote that he suspected black people to be inferior to white people. Yeah, so he said the so-called Negroes are inferior to white people. Now, is that true? Hell no. Get me Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6, please. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people mm -hmm. unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. So God told the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and natives, the so-called Negroes, to be a special people. Come on. Unto himself. Mm -hmm. Above. A what? Above. Equal to? Above. Subordinate. Above. Above. Inferior. No. Above. Superior, come on. Above all people uh -huh. that are upon the face of the earth. So you take all the nations and Esau include them, included with the other nations. God says, the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Natives, you are above all people. Now, did that change with Christ? 
Did that change with the New Testament? Absolutely not. Let's get Romans 3, please. Romans chapter 3 and verse 1. The book of Romans chapter 3 and verse 1. Come on. What advantage then hath the Jew? What advantage then hath the Jew? In order to have an advantage, that you have to have an advantage over somebody. Just like if there's a disadvantage or an advantage, that's with an opposing force, meaning the other nations. God says, what advantage doth have the Jew, meaning the Israelites? Go ahead. Or what profit is there of circumcision? What profit is there of the law of circumcision who was given to the Israelites? Go ahead. Much every way. Much every way. Much every way. Go ahead. Chiefly, mainly, come on, because unto them were committed the oracles of God. So no other race on this earth should be holding our Bible because the Bible says unto the Israelites, the Negroes, Hispanics and natives, the oracles of God was committed unto them. That's what gives us an advantage over all the other nations because God chose us over all the other nations. But we in this low state because we broke God's commandments. All right back to the article. Read that part again where it says he also profited. Come on. He also profited directly from the institution of slavery and wrote that he suspected black people to be inferior to white people. But the Bible says different. Go ahead. In his notes on the state of Virginia. Throughout his entire life, Thomas Jefferson was publicly a consist consistent opponent of slavery. Go down. Go down. Keep going. Go down, go down, go down, go down. Scroll faster. You're going to go to 18. Go down. Is there an 18? No, there's not. Go back up. Go back up. Let me see. Go, go, go down. Here it is. Right there. The numbers. All right. Rita Jefferson wrote. Jefferson wrote that maintaining slavery was like holding a wolf by the ear. Mm -hmm. And we can neither hold him nor safely let him go. Mm -hmm. He thought that his cherished federal union the world's first democratic experience would be destroyed by slavery. Mm -hmm. To emancipate slaves on American soil, Jefferson thought, would result in large-scale race war that would be as brutal and deadly as the slave revolt in Haiti in mm. 1791. That was the fear. That was the fear that all Edomites hated. They hated that thing. When the word Haiti came up, that's all they would think about. Go ahead. But he also believed that to keep slaves in bondage, with part of America in favor of abolition and part of America in favor of perpetuating slavery could only result in a civil war that would destroy the Union. Mm -hmm. Jefferson's later prediction was correct. In 1861, the contest over slavery sparked a bloody civil war and the creation of two nations, mm -hmm. Union and Confederacy, in the place of one. So the one thing that I, that I agreed with him is that he wanted a complete separate State. He said, if we free the Negroes, free the blacks, we got to get rid of them. Send them back to Africa or send them to Haiti. Okay, and there's another article that said 13,000, 13,000 Judites went to Haiti in the, around the year 1820, 1820 to 1830, 13,000. Okay, all right. Um, get me the next one on the Democratic Republic. Because we often hear that word a lot. Democratic Republican Party. Read that. Go down. Just want to clear the air with this. Go ahead. The Democratic Republican Party, better known at the time as Republican Party. Better known at the time as the Republican Party. Go ahead. And various other names mm -hmm. was an American political party founded by Thomas Jefferson. So Thomas Jefferson was a Republican. He was a Republican, although they called it a Democratic Republican Party better known at the time as the Republican Party. Okay, drop that. Now get me the next article. Let's go back to this demon. So what we're doing is we're seeing everybody speaking the same. Everybody is speaking the same. They all have the same views, whether they're Democrats or Republican. Okay, go ahead. Joe Biden has built a career on betraying black voters. Go ahead. The title says, says it all. You don't even got to read down, all right? But we're going to read a, a few points. Go ahead. Joe Biden's string of primary victories highlights a central paradox of his career. He has secured the lo loyalty of African-American voters while working nonstop to let them down. Go ahead, down, go ahead. And this is a Democrat. These are the people that our people want to vote for. 
Okay. Go down. Go down. Right there. An underwhelming start for Joe Biden's campaign in February seemed to mark it as dead in the water. Now he's back, and it's in large part thanks to African-American voters. After his big South Carolina win on the back of strong black support revived his campaign, Biden solidified his place as a front runner through a series of wins in southern states on Super Tuesday with mostly older African-Americans in those with states. With mostly older African-Americans in those states. So the reason why he's going to be going up against Trump is because of black people who have not yet learned their lesson. That's why the Bible says in Jeremiah, is Israel a homeborn slave? Let's get that. Let's get that real quick. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home? Oh, a start, home at verse, st start at verse 13. Verse 13. Come on. For my people have committed two evils. Go ahead. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. So we forsake God, the fountain of living water. The water is what? What is the water? The word, the commandments, not keeping the commandments. Okay, we must keep the commandments, all right? The water is the commandments. Go ahead. And hew them out cisterns. Cistern is what? It's something that holds water. Holds water. Go ahead. Broken cistern. Broken cistern. Guess what? Politics is a broken cistern. Religion is a broken cistern. Go ahead. That can hold no water. Holds no water. There ain't no commandment keeping. Nobody's speaking about the commandments. They're just running around talking about Joe Biden, Trump, the lesser of two evils. It's, two, it's still the same thing. That's why in the, big, in the beginning, it says, for my people have committed two evils. Talk about the lesser of two evils, you dumb, simple Negroes. Still want to walk around the same mountain. Go into a cistern that holds no water, known as politics and religion. That's what keeps us divided. Don't you think the white man knows that? Those are his traps. Go ahead. Is Israel a servant? Are we a servant? What the hell is wrong with you? That's why it says um, Super Tuesday in southern states, mostly com uh, comprised of African Americans in those states, backing him in large numbers. What is wrong with our people? Officer Lemmy, well, what the hell is wrong with us? We are insane in the membrane. Insane. I'm telling you, man. Read on. Is Israel a servant? Go ahead. Is he a homeborn slave? Are we a homeborn slave? Come on. Why is he spoiled? Why are we spoiled? Spoiled with what? Politics, religion. We got to come up out of that. We have to wake up as a nation of people, man, and stop depending on Esau to save us. Okay, go back to that, Sariah. Start where it says Biden. Yes, sir. Biden has carefully cultivated loyal Democratic voters in the black community. Oh, God. Go ahead both in this campaign and throughout his decades in Washington. My entire life I've been involved with the black community, he said during the last debate. My entire career has been wrapped up in dealing with civil rights and civil liberties. Go down. But surveying Biden's record, one is left with a different impression that Biden has, in fact, built a career on the back of steadfast African-American support while consistently betraying those same voters. So I'm going to tell you what you want to hear so I can get elected. And then when I get elected, I'm going to give you the finger. I'm going to call you a shithole. I'm going to say you could sink into the seas. Go ahead. Elected as county councilman in 1970, Biden was known as an advocate for public housing, earning him racist abuse from bigoted locals in Delaware. Mm-hmm. So he was elected as an advocate, meaning one who fights for public housing, dealing with amongst the black community. So because of that, his own people started spewing racist rhetoric at him, probably calling him a coon, a, a, a coon lover, an end lover, and so forth. Go ahead. Yet he quickly assured. And because of this, yet he quickly, yet he quickly, meaning minutes later, just like your boy Donald Trump, Yet he quickly, come on. Yet he quickly assured the press uh -huh. about his public housing stance. Go ahead. I am not a crusader rabbit. I am not a crusader rabbit, meaning I'm not here to fight for so-called minorities for public housing. Come on. Championing the rights of people. I am not a crusader rabbit championing the rights of people. What people? Black people. 
he had to reassure his white colleagues and constituents that white power, he's still for that white supremacist power. Okay, drop that article. Get me the next one. Is this the, yep, the Chicago Tribune. Go ahead. Joe Biden says he was too cavalier about coming. He, now he's saying he was too cavalier. About what? About comment that black voters considering Trump over him ain't black. You hear that? Remember when he had the uh, conversation with Charlemagne the God from the Breakfast Club? And he says, look, man, black people, if y'all don't vote for me, you ain't black. Now he's saying, look, he was too cavalier about that. He was too uh, uh, forward about that, fighting for blacks. But in the other article we just read, what did he say? Go back to that. You're going to see the, the damn hypocrisy of Esau, man, and his pile of tricks. He says, I am not a crusader. That's a damn cavalier. It's the same thing. He says, I am not a crusader rabbit championing the rights of people. That's what was written in 1970. But he forgot about that. He thought God was going to make that disappear. The Most High said, no, 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 hold that. Hold that right there, and later on, we're going to reveal it. Now go back to what he said with Charlemagne. It's the same thing. He says, Joe Biden says he was too cavalier about comment that black voters considering Trump over him ain't black. But before, you was quick to say, nah, you ain't, you ain't trying to be a, a, a cavalier rabbit or whatever the hell that was for black people. But now you're saying, oh, yeah, you, you were now you're too cavalier. You're too for black people. You see how this man speaks with a forked tongue? And these are our people that our people support him. Af So-called African-Americans want to vote for Democrats and Republicans. All right. Close that one out. Get the next one. The controversial 1994 crime law that Joe Biden helped write explained the 1994 tough on crime law remains a big topic of debate in 2020 Democratic debates. Here's what you need to know. Go down. So there was a bill that he supported that increased the amount of so-called blacks getting locked up and doing heavy time for such minor crimes. This is a bill that he supported. Go ahead. One of the most controversial criminal justice issues in the 2020 Democratic primary is a tough on crime law passed 25 years ago and authored by current poll front runner Joe Biden. Go ahead. If you ask some criminal justice reform activists, the 1994 crime law passed by Congress and signed by President Bill Clinton, which was meant to reverse decades of rising crime, was one of the key contributors to mass incarceration in the keep 1990s. That, keep that word in mind, mass incarceration in 1990. Go ahead. They say it led to more prison sentences, more prison cells, and more aggressive policing, mm -hmm. especially hurting black and brown Americans mm -hmm. who were disproportionately likely to be incarcerated. Go down. If you ask Biden, that's not true at all. The law, he argued, at a recent campaign stop had little impact on incarceration, which largely happened at the state level. As recently as 2016, Biden defended the law, arguing it restored American cities following an era of high crime and violence. Go down. Go down. No, keep going. We're going to skip that. Go down. Go down. Go down. Go down. Go down. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go too fast. There's something I'm looking for. Go down. Go down. Because you read it was instituted in 1994, right? But it was in the works since the 80s. Go down. Go down more. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Wait, slow down. Go down. Go down. Wait, wait, go up. Let me see if there's a year there. Anything with the year? Oh, okay. All right, so you see a spike. You see a spike starting in the 80s, going into the 90s. Y'all see that? Y'all see that, yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, go down. Go down. Okay. Uh, right there. Uh, right there, Comprehensive Control Act. Comprehensive Control Act. 
Come on. This 1984 law spearheaded by Biden. Spearheaded by who? Biden. Go ahead. And Senator Strom Thurmond mm -hmm. expanded federal drug trafficking penalties and civil asset forfeiture, which allows police to seize and absorb someone's property, mm -hmm. whether cash, cars, guns, or something else without proving the person is guilty of a crime. Damn. That's horrible. Go down. And who do you think that affected? Black people. Although we shouldn't be dealing in drugs anyway. You got to go ahead. Officer Osai. Check, check. Uh, is this going into the three strikes law too as well? Is this um, that, yeah, that goes into it too. Okay. Because he supported that from Bill Clinton. Right. Okay. So this affected mainly blacks. If you're going to pass a law, it got to be on even playing grounds. The same thing, the same law that affects us should affect Esau. Esau shouldn't get less time because of cocaine. And we get more time because of crack cocaine. That makes no sense. Drugs should be drugs, period. I don't care how it was cooked, because they know crack is mostly found where? In black neighborhoods. Cocaine is the rich man drug. Okay, go down. Anti-drug abuse. Anti-drug abuse act of 1986. Keep in mind the years. Keep in mind the, the years. Go ahead. This law, sponsored and partly written by Biden, ratcheted up penalties for drug crimes. It also created a big sentencing disparity between crack and powder cocaine. Mm, there we go. Come on. Even though the drugs are pharmacologically similar, the law made its someone would need to possess 100 times the amount of powder cocaine to be eligible for the same mandatory minimum sentence for crack. Since crack is more commonly used by black Americans, this sentencing disparity helped fuel big racial disparities in incarceration. Damn. Go ahead. Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 1988. This law co-sponsored by Biden increased prison sentences for drug possession Enhanced penalties for drug for trans transporting drugs and establish the official the Office of National Drug Control Policy, which coordinates and leads federal anti drug efforts. So it says, um, and establish the Office of National Drug Control Policy. Wicked as hell. All of these things are wicked as hell. And it was meant to what? In prison black people. You need bodies over there. Why do you need bodies over there? Next article. Next article. Keep in mind the dates. All of this spiked during the 80s. So what happened during the 80s? Crack epidemic. That's it. But something else. Ronald Reagan was uh, elected. Right here. It's on the screen. Privatized prison. Privatized prison. You need bodies in prisons. You need bodies in prisons to make money. Follow the money. It's the same thing like being a developer, a real estate developer. Here I'm going to purchase 60 acres of land to build a development of houses there. How do you think I'm going to get paid? Because I have to spend my own resources or grants, if I possibly got some grants, to build the houses. Don't I need to put bodies in those houses? It's the same thing like the prison. It's the same thing. Go down. Go down. Go down, go down. There's something that I want to get. Go down, go down, go down, go down, go down. Get me United States. Go down, go down. Private prisons, hold it, go back up. Private prisons are operated in the United States of America. 2018, 8.41% of prisoners in the United States were housed in private prisons. Go down. All right, read, uh, go down. Nope, nope, go down. I'll tell you when to start. Go down. Right there. Right there. Go ahead. Federal and state governments have a long history of contracting out specific services to private firms, including medical services, food preparation, vocational training, and inmate transportation. Go ahead. However, the 1980s ushered in a new era of prison privatization. The 19 what? 1980s. That's when all those laws was being passed to destroy black people. All those policies was being passed to destroy black people, to put money into the pockets of Edomite investors. Okay, get me, hold that, get me Habakkuk. Get me Habakkuk. Matter of fact, before you get me Habakkuk, get me Daniel. Daniel 8. Yes, sir. 
Daniel 8, verse 25. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 8 and verse 25. Mm -hmm. And through his policy. And through his policies. Go ahead. Also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. This is some crafty stuff we're reading about. This is some real crafty stuff you're reading about. That's what's good to do research, and I love researching. Don't try to hide nothing from me. I love researching. This is some real wicked, crafty stuff these Democratic, Republican devils was doing in the 80s to keep our people destroyed. All of these, there's no coincidence that all of these legislative acts was just popping up in the 80s. Because that's when they privatized prison. That's when it went public and you could what? Invest in it as stock options. Who are the stocks? You, Negroes, it, the Israelites. Read. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. Go ahead. And by peace shall destroy many. And by peace shall destroy many. Get me Habakkuk now. Habakkuk 1 and 4. Yes, sir. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 1 and verse 4. Therefore, the law is slack. The law is slack. How are you going to say you need 100 times more cocaine to get the same prison time as crack? One crack vial, one crack rock. That's wicked as hell. Go ahead. And judgment doth never go forth. And judgment no never go forth in, in America. America with three Ks. United Snakes of America. Babylon the Great. Judgment will never go forth. Why? Because this is not the land of our rest. Go ahead. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Mm -hmm. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. Therefore, wrong, wrong judgment proceedeth. Go back to this article. Read it again. Federal and state governments have a long history of contracting out specific services to private firms, including medical services, food preparation, vocational training, and inmate transportation. Mm -hmm. However, the 1980s ushered in the 1980s. Go ahead. Ushered in a new era of prison privatization. Mm, that's all I want. Go down. Go down. Click on Core Civic Corrections Corporation of America. Click on it. Read. Core Civic, formerly the Corrections Corporations of America, CCA, is a company that owns and manages private prisons mm -hmm. and detention centers and operates others on a concession basis. Uh -huh. Co-founded co in 1983. Co-founded in 1983. Go down, go down, go down. Click on traded as stocks. No, 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 no. no. Just to your right, to your right. It's okay, brother. Right there. Look at that right there. Stock options, black bodies, privatized prison. That's why all those acts was passed. And they need bodies. Make it hard on black people. Harass them. Give them longer sentencing than white folks. We need bodies in those prisons to make money. Everything is about money, 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 money. Okay? Read that. Go down. Look at that. Look at that. Traded now is uh, $9.84. Okay? When it first went public in the 80s, it was, uh, I think, $9 per share, if I'm not mis mistaken. Go down. Go down. Go down. That's it. Keep going. Keep going. Down, 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 down. Look at all of that. Go down. Go down. Black bodies, man. Un unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now there's no more cotton, cocoa, sugarcane, tobacco. It's privatized prison. Black bodies. Okay? That's why it's important. That's why we got to keep the commandments of God to make sure none of this. They'll find ways. They'll implement stuff, but we don't want to give them a reason. Let them fight to find a way to put us in jail. Remember what Christ said. If any of us suffer, don't suffer as a what? An evildoer. That's why we have to keep the commandments of God. Okay? And drug dealers can repent. You can repent. Okay? Drop that. Get me uh, Isaiah. I want Isaiah. All the wickedness done in secret. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. I'll cash out video. 
Uh, is it about this? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I sent it to the uh, in the scripts because that that mindset right here push pop that mindset um, like like um, it says a black woman shocks is a liberal a liberal is supposed to be a a, a free thinking a free uh, our kind of rights yeah homosexuals but, and smelling yeah, like doodle right. and all of that <laughs> is that but going into <laughs> what you was bringing out I want you to hear the first part of what she was saying because this woman she's a Republican. Right, so she's at this liberal because of what you just brought out about what Joe Biden implemented, these laws Joe Biden implemented. Read, go ahead. I'm not even mad at you, baby. I'm feeling like a fake news. This is the thing. I know people don't like Trump. I understand that. But let me tell you something. If I had to pick between him and Joe Biden, I'm not voting for Joe Biden. You want to see? You want to see? See, there we go. There we go again. That's the problem with black people, the lesser of two evils. We shouldn't be voting, period. All right, go ahead. Who go to jail by the next four years? Put your body together. Watch what happens. You want to see black men get killed substantially like, they, like you've never seen before? Put your body in and watch what happens. These Democrats, and I'm sorry to say this, I'm not trying to be racist, but they hate black people. These are the same people who have fought to keep slavery in. These are the same people who built the KKK. These are the same people who hated us from the beginning. The Republican Party is the party of the blacks. Blacks free, the Republican All right, Party is stop the stop right there. See, that's how I got with that. Because Thomas Jefferson was a Republican. You've seen his views. Reagan, Republican. We heard his views. We didn't even read it. We heard the devil speak recorded. Okay? Nixon, too. So she's wrong with that. We're not supposed to be voting, period. The only person we're supposed to be voting for is Jesus the Christ. That's right. That's it. And But she is right about Joe Biden. She is right about that. All of those things that they passed in the 80s, as soon as this core civic goes public, and now you can invest in stock, privatize prison. Oh, let's pass these laws, this law, and that law. Why to bring money in their pocket? Wicked as hell. Get me Isaiah. 42, verse 22. Isaiah 42, verse 22. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42 and verse 22. Go ahead. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. The This is a people, the people's making reference to the Israelites. Robbed and spoiled, robbed of our nationality, nationality, robbed of our culture, robbed of our God, robbed of our self-identity, and spoiled through religion, spoiled through politics, spoiled through miseducation. Go ahead. They are all of them snared in holes, mm -hmm. and they are hid in prison houses. Where hid where? In prison houses. Hid in prison houses because of false policies, wrong policies, wrongful laws, tricks, snares. Read. They are for a prey. We are a prey. We are a prey, brothers and sisters. We are a prey. Who's hunting us? The Democrats, the Republicans, all Edomites in every institution. That's why we always uh, go back to the, um, the eugenics tree and show you each branch. Each of those branches, each of those roots, those, um, the groupings in the, in the roots of the eugenics tree, we are for a prey. We are for a prey. Is that it? No, sir. And none delivereth. And none delivereth. You think Joe Biden is going to deliver you? Hell no. Obama didn't even deliver your black behinds. Thinking he's the damn savior. You know he's not. The only savior we got is Christ. When are we going to realize that? When are we going to lean on the Bible? Full. Fully lean. Just fall on it. Don't even lean. Just fall on it. When the hell are we going to do that? Nope. We want to lean on politics. We want to lean on Joe Biden's shoulder. Simple as hell. Like those two black demonic women that was running after Trump. And then Fox canceled their dumb behind. Because they ran. At, Trump said um, COVID-19 was fake. They ran and said the same thing. And then people started dropping dead. They was like, yo, get these two black ostriches out of here. Right. Okay, we can't lean on politics, man. We cannot lean on politics. Get me Isaiah 51 verse 20. There was more? Okay, go ahead. No, I'm sorry about that. Read on. No, you're okay. Go ahead. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Come on. They are all of them snared in holes. Mm -hmm. And they are hid in prison houses. Mm -hmm. They are for a prey and none delivereth. Mm -hmm. For a spoil and none saith restore. Yeah, but the Israelites are out crying out, 
day and night, saying, restore. We are the only ones. We must care for ourselves. We can't expect other people to love us if we don't love ourselves. We are the only ones crying day and night, restore, restore, restore us back to what? To our former condition. That's where you get the word re, means to go back. Go back to what? The same way we was during the time of King David, King Solomon, okay? Keeping the laws of God with the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's what that restore is talking about. Give me Isaiah 51 and 20 now. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. Thy sons have fainted. We have fainted. Come on. They lie at the head of all the streets. That's why we always up in the projects on the corner, hanging in, hanging in front of the um the stone cause and so forth. That's us. The Bible speaking about the Israelites. Come on. As a wild bull in a net. In a, as a wild bull in a net. In traps. A wild bull in a net. Go ahead. They are full of the fury of the Lord. We are full of the fury of the Lord. Where can I read about the fury of the Lord? Give me a soldier. You right there. Give me a, one of the brothers, a brother or a soldier. What is the fury of the Lord, and where can I read about the fury of the Lord? I don't have the um, shalom. Uh, shalom, okay. Isaiah 66. No. Nope. No, no, stay right there. Give him another shot. Fury means anger. Where can I read about the anger of the Lord? Another word for anger is curse. I just gave it to you. Deuteronomy 28. Very good. You said that like you weren't sure. Be sure next time. Yes, Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 to 68. That's where you read about the fury of the Lord. Okay, go ahead, Yaqub. Yes, sir. They are full of the fury of the Lord. Come on. The rebuke of thy God. The rebuke of thy God. God is talking about us. That's why we held up in these prison houses. Okay? Because of the curses that are upon us. Now, let's get to the Let's get deeper into this thing. Go to Black Lives Matter website. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Not her. Just type in Black Lives Matter. Go to the website, the actual official website. Now, them, uh, Black Lives Matter is supposed to be called what? What do they call themselves? A majority of them. They're not Republicans. They're not conservatives, right? They're what? Liberals. 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 Democrats. Black power. Black lives matter. Really? Okay. Hmm. There was a, there's a rapper called Styles P. Y'all heard of him, right? From the locks. The other day he said, where the hell is the money going for Black Lives Matter? Where is it going? Because I don't see any infrastructure being built in black communities, public housing being like flourishing uh, the educational system. How about the HBCUs? I don't see nothing with that. I mean, Netflix just donated 100 mil, supposedly, to HBCUs recently. But what happened to all the money Black Lives Matter was making? What happened all the, to all the money they were donating to liberals, Democrats? Hmm. Click donate, please. Click donate. And no, we ain't donating. You ain't getting a dollar from us damn transgender movement okay go to um a thousand go down wait go down go down go down go down go to terms and condition you see wait 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 go back oh, okay right there no the sign it's fine act blue act blue keep that in mind act blue go down Go down, go down. Campaign finance laws. Why, when you click on donate, it takes you to something called Act Blue, and it says campaign, campaign, campaign finance laws. Why? Did anybody ever ask a question? Why? Hmm. Okay. Leave this. Go to opensecrets.org opensecrets.org go to opensecrets.org you have to put it together okay it's all right just click no just click on that there we go okay opensecrets.org 
where we go to to follow the money. One of my favorite sites. Type in Act Blue, please. Okay, go down. What? Right? Expenditures, please. Hmm. Go to uh, 2000 and well, what's this right here? 2000 and uh, try 2018. Let's see if anything pops up. Okay, go back to 2012 or we'll work our way up. Hold on, when was Black Lives Matter established anyway? Let's start at 2016. I think it was started during the time of Trayvon Martin or Michael Brown, one of those. Let's start from 16 on up. All right, so hmm, where's the money going? Media, 599 million. Media, 599 million. That's not 599,000. 599 million. Because in total, look, contributions, 654 million. Campaign expenses, 3.4K. Strat strategy and research, 20K. Unclassifiable. Why is it unclassified? Hmm. 740. Administrative, 1.2 million. Fundraising, 1.3. Salaries. Hmm. Wonder how people have so much time to uh, come to neighborhoods, destroy neighborhoods so black people could get blamed on it. They skip out on their jobs and protest for months. Then you have people say, well, I'm getting paid for this. Hmm, now we know where. Salaries, 6.9 million. Go down. Oh, look at this. Administrative event expenses and food. Feed these Edomite devils. These transgenders. There's Black Lives Matter movement. Feed them. Go down. Come on. Give them fuel for the fire. Look at this right here. Unbelievable. Go down. Wait, 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 wait. Go back up. Go back up. Go back up. Hmm. Contributions to federal candidates. Who is that? How come black people don't have a say in this? I thought it was Black Lives Matter. I thought it, I thought it was for the poor. I thought it was for the afflicted. Why does it say contributions to federal candidates? Contributions to national parties. Contributions to committees. Contributions to joint fundraising committees. Go down. Go down. And look at this, all unclassified. Go down. Top vendor recipients. Hmm. Bernie. Oh, Bernie Sanders. Democratic congressional campaign. Democratic senatorial campaign. And Citizens United. Maggie for New Hampshire. Catherine Cortez Masto for Senate. Russ for Wisconsin. Deb uh, Deborah. Oh, Deborah Ross. That's Amalek. Deborah Ross for Senate. Katie McGinty for Senate. Kamala Harris for Senate. Go back up. Top vendors and recipients go up. So once again, Black Lives Matter has nothing to do with the agenda of black people coming back together, both man and woman. Go back out, go back to the Black Lives Matter webpage. Now you see where the money is going to. Okay, go to uh, go back to the main web page, the home, click home, go to go to about what we believe. Go down, go down. What uh, politicians go down, go down. All right, right there, where it says, uh, start where it says, we see, Soraya. We see ourselves. Start it again. We see ourselves as part of the global black family, mm -hmm. and we are aware of the different ways we are impacted or privileged as black people who exist in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. 
we are guided by the fact that all black lives matter, regardless of actual or perceived sexual identity, gender identity, mm -hmm. gender expression, economic status, ability, disability, religious beliefs or disbeliefs, immigration status or location. Unbelievable. So that's what they believe in. Gender identity could be whatever you want. Feel however you feel. That's why they call them liberals, right? Perceived sexual identity. All of this is immorality. The Most High is not going to bless that. I don't even think they believe in the Most High God. The Most High God is not going to bless that. Okay, get me, um, get me Leviticus. Get me the law on homosexuality, please. And then after that, I want the one in Romans. Book of Leviticus. So they believe in all homosexuals, transgender, whatever you want, bestiality, man blurs, come together as long as you black. The Most High is not going to bless that. Go ahead, Yakub. The book of Leviticus, chapter 18 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as God with... God says, thou shalt not lie with mankind. Somebody tell Black Lives Matter that. Thou shalt not lie with mankind. Because think about it. If black first, that thing was started by two lesbians, I think, right? You're in clear, by supporting this, you are basically in clear denial and hatred for the first commandment, which was what? What was the first commandment that God gave mankind? Kasha, you answer. Thou shalt not have any other God before me. No. What, what did he tell Adam? Oh, um, be fruitful and multiply. Be okay. fruitful and multiply. Okay. Two men cannot be fruitful and multiply. Two women cannot be fruitful and multiply. But, but, but Black Lives Matter says otherwise. Read that law again. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. You shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. That, that, that's it? It is abomination. It is what? It is abomination. It is abomination. It is abomination. Go ahead. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself. Okay, that's it. Jump to, um, get me, uh, oh, let me send you something. Get me the one in Romans. Romans chapter 1. You want me to start at verse 25? Uh, yes, sir. The book of Romans. Chapter 1 and verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. For this cause, God gave them up to vile effects. So our brothers and sisters that are part of Black Lives Matter who who fit this lifestyle of transgenderism and homosexuality, God said he gave you up to vile affections. That is a vile thing. And who's behind us? Democrats. Democrats. Go ahead. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Mm. Go ahead. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, Burned in their lust, one toward another. Burned in their lust, one towards another. Go ahead. Men with men. Men with men. Yuck. Go ahead. Working that which is unseemly. Working that which is unseemly. Go ahead. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error. What is the recompense of their error? What is the recompense of their error? Officer, Milkama. What is the recompense of their error? We know the error is two men working that which is unseemly. So what is the recompense? AIDS. AIDS. Diseases, syphilis, syph I said, I was about to say syphilis, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, all those things, all those sexually transmitted diseases. God says it is a recompense of your error. Read. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Which was meat. So God was satisfied. When, you, when Tyrone laid with Steve and you got AIDS or whatever disease you got, God said he was satisfied with that. It was meat. Your, that error. It was meat for that error that you did. That sin. Go ahead. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, mm -hmm. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. 
mm -hmm. to do those things which are not convenient. So God says, because you did not want to retain God in your in your knowledge, I'm going to give you over to a reprobate mind where you think being a transgender is fine. Well, you think men with men laying together, it's fine. A woman and woman is fine. Hey, man and dog is fine. God said, I'm going to give you over to a reprobate mind because you did not want to maintain my laws in your mind. Go ahead. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Come on. Fornication. Fornication. Wickedness. Uh -huh. Covetousness. Mm -hmm. Maliciousness. Go ahead. Full of envy. So these are the attributes that you see in transgenders and so forth. Go ahead. Murder. Debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God. Haters of God, come on. Despiteful, mm -hmm. proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. Inventors of evil things, come on. Disobedient to parents. Disobedient, come on. Without understanding. Without understanding. Covenant breakers mm -hmm. without natural affection. Without natural affection. The natural affection is a man and a woman. To lay together and reproduce. That's natural affection. This is all biblical. This is not hate speech. This is truth speech. Go ahead. Implacable. Mm -hmm. Unmerciful. Mm -hmm. Who, knowing the judgment of God, mm -hmm. that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Mm -hmm. God says they that commit such things are worthy of death. Go ahead. Not only do the same. Not only do the same. Not, not those who only do the same, who do the act. Go ahead. But... Have pleasure in them that do them. But those who cheer them on, those who say, well, I'm just going to turn a blind eye to it. Like our people in the Black Lives Matter movement who know this is going on, know what the movement is about and still partake in it. They might say, well, I'm not gay. I'm not a transgender, but it's OK. I'm going to march with them. I'm going to support them. I'm going to donate to them. God says, guess what? You're going to get the same reward. The same thing uh, two men get for laying together, you're going to get the same reward, which is death. Okay? Is there more on that? No, sir. Okay. Uh, get me. Let me send this to you, Jonathan. Jonathan, I'm about to send you something. Yes, Nahum 3, verse 6. I just sent you two pictures, Jonathan, that I need. Go ahead. Read that. Yes, sir. The book of Nahum, chapter 3 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. And I will cast abominable filth upon thee. God says, because you did not want to keep my laws in your mind, I'm going to cast abominable filth upon you. Go ahead. And make thee vile. And make you vile. Let's view some vile stuff. This is vile. Okay. The agenda of the Black Lives Matter movement is vile. All right. Read that. BLM or Black Lives Matter has never been about black lives. They could care less. It's always been a mask to hide their agenda and true intentions like leadership has been saying. You cannot join together with your enemies and expect your problems to get solved. Instead, All right, go down. Look at that right here. Look at this. What does that have to do with black equality and, and cops trying to get cops to stop shooting us down at a disproportionate rate? Unbelievable. Look at that thing. Go to the next one. Look at this. Read that scripture again. And I will cast abominable filth upon thee. This is abominable. God says, I'm going to cast abominable filth upon you. Come on. And make thee vile. And make you vile. This is a vile thing. That's what it said in Romans chapter 1. This is vile as hell. What does this have to do with anything? That's why we don't get no respect. That's why they don't respect the black man. Because of this. Look at this dude. What the hell is he doing? Look at the cops standing there. Like, what the hell is this? What the hell does bending over showing him your rear end have to do with stop shooting us down on the street? Black lives matter. More like butt-loving men. What the hell is this? Unbelievable. 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 Abominable and filth. Give me Psalms 12 and verse 8. The book of Psalms. Well, before you get that, give me 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Because you might have brothers and sisters who partake in that lifestyle who might watch this class and might feel offended. If you are offended, good. Repent. You can, you can repent. As long as you're breathing, you still got a heartbeat and breath in your lungs, you can repent. Okay, let's go to our forefathers. Because many of our forefathers struggled with this too. 
First Corinthians. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 6 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? So homosexuality, transgenderism, and all these things pushed by BLM, butt-loving men, guess what? That is against God. Okay, and we're going to read about some other things that's against God. Read. Be not deceived, mm -hmm. neither fornicators. Don't be fornicators. Come on. Nor idolaters. Nor idolaters. Come on. Nor adulterers. Nor adulterers. Go ahead. Nor effeminate. Nor effeminate. Nor effeminate. What we just seen was two effeminate men bending over, showing their rear ends to the police. That's a form of effeminate. Go ahead. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Abusing yourself with mankind falls under that too. Homosexuality. Abusing yourself with mankind. Go ahead. Nor thieves. Mm -hmm. Nor covetous. Go ahead. Nor drunkards. Mm -hmm. Nor revilers. Read on. Nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So if you continue, you will not inherit with the kingdom of God. But you can not you can repent. Go ahead. And such were some of you. That's why Paul said that. Because many of the followers of Christ, they used to live, used to live that lifestyle, but they repented. That's why Paul says, and such were some of you, meaning you stopped doing it. Read. And such were some of you, mm -hmm. but ye are washed. Washed with the laws of God in the faith of Christ. Go ahead. But ye are sanctified. Sanctified in his word. Go ahead. But ye are justified uh -huh. in the name of the Lord Jesus uh -huh. and by the Spirit of of our God. Now get me Psalms 12 and 8. The book of Psalms, chapter 12 and verse 8. Go ahead. The wicked walk on every side. So the wicked walks on every side. And they come with the name of Democrats, Republicans, Black Lives Matter, conservatives, liberal, far right, far left, in the middle. Go ahead. When the vilest men are exalted. And it says the vile. Now we, that's an example. We've seen the vilest men being exalted. Now they're exalting transgenderism. They're exalting. They're making it cool to be a homosexual. But it's against God. It is against God. The vilest man has been exalted. And that also goes into Esau being exalted. Because these are his ways. He's the one handing in the donations behind the scene it says the vilest men are exalted is that it yes sir get me the proof of that get me job chapter 30 and verse 8 that book, is going into esau as well the book of job chapter 30 and verse 8 come on they were children of fools who are the children of fool esau go ahead yay children of base men children of base men come on they were viler than the earth. They were viler than the earth. They were viler than the earth. That's why we pushed them out into the caves. This was future prophecy what Job was speaking about. Because remember when Esau was back then, they were dukes. They were rich. This was later prophecy that was fulfilled. Now they're vile. All their policies, vile. All their laws, vile. And our people follow it. Like our brothers and sisters in the Black Lives Matter movement. Go back to Psalms 12 and 8 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 12 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. The wicked walk on every side. The wicked walk on every side. Come on. When the vilest men are exalted. And our people exalt the vile. Go so far, but to skip out on work, they probably give them the day off to go and vote. Stand on those long lines to vote for the vilest of the earth and follow his ways. And you end up in the, the butt-loving men program called the BLM, Black Lives Matter. Yeah, right. Get me Isaiah 32, verse 5. The book of Isaiah, chapter 32 and verse 5. Mm. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. Come on. Nor the churl said to be bountiful. So what is God calling the liberals? Vile. Guess what? The Republicans fall under that too. Remember, remember with Thomas Jefferson, they were called the Democratic Republic, although he was a Republican. They're all the same, same two horns from the same lamb that spake like a dragon. Read that again. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. Come on. Nor the churl said to be bountiful. Go ahead. For the vile person 
will speak villainy. That's all we've been discussing for the whole class. The vile person speaking villainy. We've seen examples of that with all the past presidents speaking out of their mouths about the children of Israel. Go ahead. And his heart will work iniquity. Uh-huh. To practice hypocrisy. Practice hypocrisy through his laws, through his policy. They practice hypocrisy. And we've seen many levels of that today. Go ahead. And to utter error against the Lord. To utter error against the Lord. Transgender him. Do as you please. Two men can get married. That is error against the Lord. Go ahead. To make empty the soul of the hungry. We are the hungry. We are the one that's hungry for this word. Hungry for knowledge. Why? Because we lost a sense of knowledge in slavery, in captivity. We are the hungry. Go ahead. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. Yeah, we are also the thirsty. But the, the, true, the true way our brothers and sisters are going to quench their thirst is by the word of God, which is also the water. That's right. Okay? Meaning God's laws. God's laws. There's no other way. There's no other way. But Esau knows that through politics, he will keep us divided. He knows that. That's one of his trick bags that our people get caught up in. Okay? Get me um, the next video. Well, next picture. Well, show me the video first. Let's get the video first with Cornell West. This is what happens when you get caught up in Esau's politics. Confusion. Play that. It's my turn. It's my turn. You try to conflate. You try to conflate protesting and police misconduct. And shame on you. And you're absolutely wrong. You won't address the issue. You will refuse to address the issue because I'm talking to you. I'm talking. You're not my brother. You're not my brother. You're. You are. You are hurting black people by acting this position. You are taking the wrong position. He's going at his own brother for the sake of politics. And you're going to see who's behind the scene, who's just chilling with his legs crossed, chilling. He probably got a Cuban cigar somewhere under the table. Just uh, look at my two peasants here. Look at my two peasants. That's it. Keep it going. Go ahead. Press play. That's it. No, my I'm brother. That Are stuff plays out. Too? That plays out. Too? Address the question. Negro. Do you? Oh, my gosh. You have lost control. You're a dinosaur. You're an outright Negro. dinosaur. You have dinosaur. lost this. Lame as hell. Who says that? You're a dinosaur. You're a dinosaur. It's just like a freaking guy been hanging around with Esau for too long. Oh, is that it? No, nah, then there's more. Hold it. I'm Keep not going. part of your group. I'm not part of your group. You have lost it. You are a dinosaur. And you know what? Oh, He's part of the group. Who do you want? Do all you want. Guys, that does not work on me. That does are, not work on me. You're the one who's going to keep saying that. Not it's all talky boy. All talky He's like, oh, man, I love this. He's like, I love this. He's like, it's better It's better them than me. <laughs> Take this down. Oh, get me the ostrich. Get me the ostrich, please. All righty. So remember, if you do the research on her, she was a Democrat at first. She, she was a Democrat at first. She won a lawsuit over racism. And then somebody came and gave her a fat check. They said, we're going to do away with uh, Tommy, L Tommy Loren, whatever they call her. And we want you as the new face of Republicanism. Hmm. Okay, they put her up. Go ahead. Press play. And I, I really started talking about really the Native Americans because um, a, a, a girl, 16 years old, goes to a school that's $57,000 a year in New York City. I used to nanny for her. She's 16 now. Um, on the first day of school, they're required to take a, um, a diversity class after they're shown their safe space Okay, in New York City, 16 years old. And the diversity class is when they go around the room and they're supposed to talk about why they feel guilty for being white. Mind you, the girl's Jewish. She's, she's, I mean, they're, they're, they're proper Jewish, but, you know, Jewish people are white now. It doesn't matter. And they're encouraged to share why they feel guilty. And then they're, they're, her first paper was to write a paper on why. Um, Look at the face of Esau. Chris, Columbus Day should be renamed Indigenous People Day. Right. And I, and I listened to that and I said, the, the concept now that Native Americans were these people that were just planting flowers. So that were because of her views of politics and her constant being on her knees like friggin' Monica Lewinsky, it, it, it confused her. It's confusion. Look what she's about to say. Go ahead. Like the Disney movie Pocahontas, and then here came white man John Smith and his guys, 
And I'm like, they were literal cannibals. It's been proven, it proven wow. beyond a shadow of a doubt. New York Times even had to run the piece. Yes, they cannibalized, they ate, they had sacrifices. Wow. No, no, keep going, keep going. Aztecs killed hundreds and thousands of kids sacrificed to the rain gods. That stuff stopped when white men began believing in a monotheistic worldview and started wow. assigning morality and saying it you actually is not. She threw Northern Kingdom under the bus. Under the bus, got in the bus, reversed it, and then drove it right back over them. She is the devil, all because of politics. Politics, I should say. She wants to make Esau happy. Now let's hear his response. Go ahead for not right it's not all about the rain god the sun god there's you, there's you meaning should have... so she said white man brought them a monotheism hmm now you notice he, he didn't rebuttal this when you watch the full video he didn't really he was happy as hell smiling and everything like damn this is great this is freaking great our bedwin she's she's still fighting for us right. she's still fighting for us bob unbelievable get me the next picture All right, blow it up. There we go. Thumbs up. All right. Let's read. Let's read. It's politics again. Politics. You gotta. You gotta. There we go. Somebody read that for me. The only person I love more than the man on my left. The is man on my left is her husband. The man on her on her left is her husband. So I was right when I said. I know some of the sisters probably got offended when I said Monica Lewinsky. She is. A black version of Monica Lewinsky, damn it. Why do you think she's thinking the way she, she thinks? Edomite injection every night, defiling her brain. She forgot who her people are. Go ahead. The only person I love more than the man on my left is the man on my right. Wow. So what happened to her black father? No, non-existence. The black father don't, he don't, he doesn't matter. Eh, it don't matter. My Edomite husband here and... Donald Trump here, those are the men that matter in my life. None of my black kinsmen matter. My black cousin doesn't matter. My black male uncle doesn't matter. My black father who birthed me does not matter. Wow, go ahead. Is it me or does our president look younger today than when he first took office? Wow, flattery, flattery. She probably went in the back office with him after, go ahead. I'm thinking the fountain of youth might be liberal tears. Let's keep them flowing. Unbelievable. I wonder how much her check is, boy. They writing her a fat check. They're writing the fat check, and you, Bob, you make sure you handle your business. You try to handle your business every night. Keep her in check. Hey, Cap. Okay. Hey, Cap. Um, get me. Um, hey, Cap. Yeah. Real quick. I'm mm -hmm. Point out on there, she made it clear so people aren't confused why you said liberal to Democrat. Mm -hmm. She made it clear right there when she said liberal tears. Liberal She's tears. talking about Democratic She's tears. Yep. Yeah. Democrat tears. Unbelievable. This is why the Mosai told tell us do not get involved with that. All right. It separates that. Because there she's speaking out against Jake. She's speaking out against Northern Kingdom. And look who she's exalting. Esau. All right. Get me Jeremiah. Jeremiah 15, 19 to 21. We got one more scripture after this, and that's it. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 15 and verse 19. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, if that if thou return. If we return, not return back to religion, not return back to politics, if we return back to his laws. Go ahead. Then will I bring thee again. Then will I bring thee again. Back to where? To our homeland. Get us up out of captivity. Come on. And thou shalt stand before me. Mm -hmm. And if thou take forth the, pre the precious from the vow. The precious are the brothers that repent. The precious are the sisters that repent. The vile are what we've seen earlier. Those walking in lascivious lifestyles. Those are the vile. Go ahead. Thou shalt be as my S mouth. Start from and if again. And if thou take forth the precious from the vile. If we repent. Go ahead. Thou shalt be as my mouth. We're going to walk accord according to God's commandments because that's what comes out of his mouth. Go ahead. Let them return unto thee. Mm hmm but return not thou unto them. Don't go back to those lifestyles. Don't go back to Black Lives Matter, transgender, uh, uh, transgender agendas and all of that. Leave off from sin. Come on. And I will make thee unto this people. Once you return back to God, he says, I will make thee unto this people. Come on. A fenced brazen wall. Mm -hmm. 
and they shall fight against thee. Come on. But they shall not prevail. So once we start keeping the commandments of God, brothers and sisters, God says he's going to fight for us. Come on. But they shall not prevail against thee. Mm -hmm. For I am with thee mm -hmm. to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Beautiful right there. Get me Second Timothy's. Okay, and that precious is also going into that small remnant in Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 9, I believe it is. Remember the scripture, what it says in Isaiah 1 and 9? Except I left thee a small remnant, thou shalt been as unto what? Sodom and Gomorrah. The Israelites are the only ones speaking out against this thing, man. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. Come on. No man that war. No man that warreth. Brothers, are we at war? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Go ahead. Entangle himself with the affairs of this life. So we ain't going to vote. We don't care if you were Democrat or liberal or a right-wing conservative. We are not going to vote. The Bible forbids it. Go ahead. That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. We're going to continue to please the Lord by keeping his commandments and spreading this gospel. Why? Because we are soldiers of the Lord. We ain't going to let religion and politics divide us. God said, hell no. We are soldiers of the Lord. We are not going to entangle ourselves with the affairs of this life. Y'all brothers understand? Yes, sir. All right, all praises. We're going to close it out, and we're going to wait for the bishop to come on. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.